It's my pleasure to be here, Wendy and Bill and everybody else on your amazing team. Thank you so much for having me here and thank you for working me in on this schedule. I really appreciate it. Oh, we were thrilled that you were <laughs> able to do this for us. And, um, you know, we're all kind of shaking in our shoes. We're a fund. We have self-directed IRA money in our fund. If, if this goes through, that's, you know, close to $5 million we'd have to give back. Um, and then reading in even deeper into it, allowing the uh, IRA investors to only do 10% of a deal. I mean, it's just, it's insane. The whole thing is just insane. So Jeff, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let you just talk. You did a great okay. <clears throat> presentation on Facebook and, and we just want to expand that. All right. So um, I know your amazing tech team could link back to that if you if you want to. But let me just let me just do two things very quickly because you asked me to do this. My name's Jeff Watson. I'm an attorney licensed to practice in the state of Ohio. That also lets me talk about federal taxation issues. And that's what's the topic here today. Mm -hmm. So in the background perspective, some of you are going to say, well, Jeff, you know, what what have you been doing in the past? Well, let's see about Ten, nine years ago, um, successfully lobbied on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. regarding a resale restriction that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae were doing. They wanted to stretch it out to 120 days. I got it pushed down to 30 days. The language that you see on a deed today coming out of a government-backed foreclosure that says you can't resell it for 30 days, I wrote that. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> they wanted it out to 90 to 120. We got it down to 30. Then a couple years ago, I participated in the legislative efforts to change the law in the state of Ohio regarding landlord tenant issues with the difference between pets and service animals. We got that clarified, got a huge issue taken away from the groups that were extorting money out of landlords. And currently I have a I have co-authored and worked with Congressman Vincente Gonzalez, Democrat of Texas, on H.R. 5013, which is the Affordable Home Ownership Act to increase the number of transactions a seller financer can do. And we're going to circle back to Congressman Gonzalez and the people on his staff that I enjoy working with a little bit later. Awesome. But right now, right now, if you use money in real estate, if you have an IRA, if you need money in real estate, if you flip houses, if you invest in notes, if you lend money, if you do anything like that, then you know somebody or you're doing business or you yourself are doing business with a self-directed IRA. You're using a self-directed IRA. Right. And there is, <clears throat> there is pending in Washington, D.C. right now this monstrosity mm -hmm. of a bill called the Budget Reconciliation Act that is going to cripple the self-directed IRA industry, and literally cap every IRA in America. Mm. And it's I'm going to get you the four big things that are going on with this bill. Number one, this bill limits all IRAs to no more than $10 million. I'd like to have $10 million in my IRA. I'm working towards it. But I don't want the lid to be on there. I don't want that lid on there for anybody. The second thing it's doing, which makes no sense to me, is it's capping and stopping conversions from traditional to Roth. It doesn't matter. No more backdoor conversions, no more tr conversions of any kind, shape or form. It makes no sense to me. The treasury is raking in piles of money as people convert from their tax infested traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. Right. But <clears throat> Congress, Congress has got another ax to grind. Now, here are the two that really kill us. There is a section, I believe, in the Reconcili Act, Reconciliation Act. I think it's section 138312. I close my eyes to try and remember better, but it's I think it's 138312 that literally says IRAs cannot invest like an accredited investor can invest. Mm -hmm. And if an IRA has so invested, they must get out of the deal by December 31st, 2023. Mm. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but that's a bad idea. For it multiple is for us. It's for <laughs> multiple reasons. Funds like yours are going to be horribly hit. Mm -hmm. And then what are people going to do with this money? How are right. you going to get the liquidity? I mean, it's just, I just see an, a tsunami effect out of this thing coming. It's mm -hmm. going to be a horrible thing. And then there's the next one, which is section 138314, which is so poorly written mm -hmm. that the best way I can describe it is 
no IRA will ever be involved in the ownership of any entity whatsoever. More than 10%, right? Yeah. Well, it's no more than 10%, but we don't know what they really mean by that because then they've got the direct and the indirect and they say it's, it's a terribly written piece of legislation, mm. but it goes back to my big point. Some of what they're saying is, oh, we want to, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, I read it today. Oh, we want to level the playing field for everybody. No, you don't. You're, <laughs> mad, you're mad as all get out that your buddies on Wall Street don't have access to all this money. And you're jealous as all get out over one guy that got away with it when he took $2,000 and turned it into a couple of billion. Talk about and that for just a minute, because a lot of people don't understand how that happened. A gentleman by the name of Peter Thiel was one of five guys from Russian origin that co-founded PayPal. Mm. They all five invested $2,000 in a self-directed IRA to buy shares of PayPal when it was a brand new company. Mm. When the IRS audited it, the IRS did not know how to read, enforce, or apply 26 USC 4975 E2E. If they'd have known it like I know it, like my buddy John Heyer knows it, like my buddy Quincy Long knows it, they'd have popped the dude. It'd have been all over. Yeah. No, no issue. But they yeah. didn't know what they were doing. Mm. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know how to read and apply the rule. They'd have popped him then, big money to them, and Peter would have never gone on and done more deals and grown that thing so huge. So, wow. yep. Yeah, anyhow, anyhow, what we're doing now. And this is really important. And I've, I've shared it with you guys. I emailed it with you. There's a handout I want everybody to get. And I want you to share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. It's got two really important links in there. One to my buddy John Hire's website, handsoffmyira.com. Mm -hmm. John has put that thing together in a heartbeat with his buddy Hector. And those guys are heroes for how hard they're working. I wow. mean, John's working harder than I am. I can tell because, I mean, he's exhausted when we talk. Um Hands off my IRA gives you more information than I can convey. The second thing is there's a link in that handout that will give everybody from the comfort of their own home the ability to directly contact their elected representative and they're both members of both senators and say, listen, and we preload the script. I, I wrote the script. We preloaded it. So it's a matter of click, click, fill in your own address, click, click, and boom. You did it in three minutes, okay? So there's no excuse. You can contact your Congress, congressional representative. You can contact your two state, your two U.S. senators and say, pull those two sections out of the bill. Pull them. Pull them, get them out. Get out 138-312 and 138-314. Get them out of the bill, okay? <laughs> and it'll let life get back to normal for us, mm. okay?